Ladies and gentlemen, Tejanos and Tejanitas from around the world, welcome to today's program. And now we introduce your DJ for the day. From the Tejanos Best Studio in Arizona, we bring to you the most recognized female on air talent in the Tejano music industry today, La Reina del Radio, DJ Peaches. One, I am so excited to introduce to you, and I know you guys have been waiting. I am talking to Stevie D from Brownsville, Texas, and newly signed to Freddie Records. How are you doing, Stevie? Man, hello, peaches, <laughs> and I'll tell you what I, I'm doing. I'm doing pretty good. If I was doing any better, I'd buy a boat, and name it after myself. But it's raining <laughs> today, and I don't want to go boat shopping. And since we haven't been working, I probably shouldn't buy a boat. <laughs> but uh, I'm doing good. We, I'm just keeping very busy, uh, you know, lots and lots of interviews, um, and just excited. We're we're, uh, we're beginning to to uh, schedule our tour. Uh, things are beginning to open up, and we're excited about that. Uh, we should be in the we should be practicing the new show uh, here in the next couple of weeks. We'll, we're we're going to have a oh about two or three weeks of nothing but straight uh, rehearsals. Wow. And uh, so that we can get ready because we we, we plan on coming out with uh, with a really big show, a really nice show. Uh, we're, we're we're stepping everything up. We're raising the bar, at least for us. And um, you know that's that's what we've been doing on this side. And of course, we're we're in the final stages of mixing and mastering uh, the, the new CD. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, we're excited. We're we're just uh, we're just yeah, ready to go. Always, you know? You're always busy. I see you posting on facebook i see you know and then you got a huge following so but for those people that don't know because i know like here in tucson we have a tahano uh radio station and sometimes um people don't get to know the artist they hear the song but they don't really get to know about the artist so uh, for those of us or not me but those listeners that don't know who stevie d is how did you start? I read that you started singing, but you were 11, but you must have been younger than that. Actually, um, I was uh, interested in music at a very early age, and I want to say around um, maybe nine, not, about nine years old. Um, the, now, you said you introduced me, you were talking to me from Brownsville. I'm from Brownsville. I was actually born in Fresno, California. Oh, California. Moved moved to Brownsville. My parents moved me at the age of three to Brownsville. Oh, wow. And I've been in Austin now for going on 18 years. So although oh, okay. I have my roots are in Brownsville and, and, uh, and I have some roots in Fresno, California, oh, but, wow. uh, I, I, my life is in Austin. My girls go to school here. Um, you know, this is where I base myself out of, but anyway, um, okay. I, uh, at the, at nine years old, I remember for my birthday, actually, Man, it's uh, now that I'm saying that I, I, I have a picture of me and my little brother in cowboy hats. We used to celebrate our birthdays <laughs> together because uh, he's his birthday's in February and mine was in March. Or mine is in March. His was in. He passed uh, a couple of years ago, but um, oh, sorry. Uh, we used to celebrate our birthdays together, and they dress us up like twins. We were we're not twins. He's he's Wayito, and I'm Post Morenito, <laughs> and uh, uh, they gave us guitars. Uh, um, for, for our birthdays and uh, man I, I go back uh, to the age of three where I have a guitar in my hand um, you know dressed like a charro yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, but anyway at the age of nine I remember you know wanting to get wanting to learn how to play guitar and I had asked my mom to buy me a guitar at the age of nine years old well we were um, was very we were very poor growing up uh, mm-hmm. and so the guitar she bought in, in Matamoros, uh, uh, it's a border town of Brownsville. And I had a, you know, like a rope, uh, uh, just a piece of rope and it would hang in our dining room and it got dusty. It was just, <laughs> and I had nobody to teach me, you know? Oh. Um, my mom and dad were divorced by that time. And my, although my dad knew how to play guitar, and I think that that's why, you know, I had it in the back of my head. I wanted to learn, you know, missing that father figure, uh, whatnot. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, I lost my mom at the age of 11 and at the age of 11, I remember wanting to, or, or at, at the passing of my mother, I remember that I was adamant that I wanted to play guitar at her funeral services. 
wow. And one way or another, I was going to do it. So um, my dad came into town and some ladies from church um, got together with me and they, they showed me a basic three chord progression. Mm-hmm. And I picked it up and my strumming was, you know, pretty natural. And they let me play with them at the, you know, at the, at the, we had a rosary and, you know, we had a, and the services that I played with the, with the church choir. Mm-hmm. And then I just picked it up. I just kept going. I uh, ended up living with my grandpa, being raised by my grandparents, uh, my dad's parents, and because um, my mother's family was in California, and we were already going to school in Brownsville. So me and my brother, my sister was very young. Uh, but um, my brother and I, you know, you know, they asked us, "Who do you want to live with?" Well, we said we wanted to stay in Brownsville, and so we did. But um, I ended up joining the church choir and uh, ended up becoming a church choir director and it just you know it just kept growing from there um i played the trumpet in school uh learned a little bit of piano and it it just grew from there and then i after high school i went to the navy uh desert storm happened i got out of the navy uh when i was discharged um i immediately found a band and a tejano band uh well more of a variety band Mm-hmm. And we started playing the quinceañeras and weddings and private parties and things of that nature. Uh, and it just it, it kind of just uh, kept growing from that. After that first <laughs> band, uh, uh, a very prominent band called Rio Express Band uh, in Brownsville um, recruited me. Their singer had gotten a little ill from his throat and, you know, didn't want to sing anymore. Uh, he's probably listening right now, so saludos to Pico, Raul. Um, and... Um, and so he kind of took some time off, and, and, and for about two years, I took that position. And with that band, we started to travel. We'd go to Houston, we'd go to Dallas, we, you know. And so I kind of liked it, you know. I liked the traveling, and you know, I, I got a little <laughs> bit more deeper into it. Um, I already, I, I had already known the, the Lopez brothers. What I mean by the Lopez brothers, the Joe Lopez's family from Grupo Mas. Okay. And you know, we'd hang out all the time. We'd go fishing. There's, you know, some of my best friends to this day. As a matter of fact, I just talked to Lorenzo Lopez just a little bit. A minute ago, who um, is doing a podcast and was calling me to, to uh, get on his show. But um, uh, so um, and so we kept in good contact, right? And, and uh, plus, being from Brownsville, everybody knows each other in Brownsville. All the musicians know each other. So yeah, you know, I'd go to the Moss shows. I'd work the door. I you know, I started learning a lot more about the business. Um, and you know, when I say Moss, I mean this is when Jimmy and Joe were together, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. Mm-hmm. And then, after the couple of years with Rio Express Band, I uh, I uh, talked to a, a bass player there in Brownsville that uh, was very very good bass player. Uh, we recruited an, uh, one of Eli Reina's first guitar players. Uh, he was from Brownsville, Joe Rivera, and then um, uh, Mikey Gonzalez from Jimmy Gonzalez's son, and uh, he was the the, uh, the the drummer for for Jimmy. Okay. Um, yeah, he started with me. He left the rock band to come learn how to play Tejano, and he oh, started wow. with me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and then um, and, and then Javier, uh, which was Jimmy Jimmy's first one of Jimmy's first keyboard players, he played with me. And along the way, I had uh, you know other members. Uh, David Rosas played with Signal. Um, the Rosas brothers that do the lighting engineering mm-hmm. for Signal were my were they were my guys first. And so I had a lot of opportunity, but. When the Moss breakup happened, when the Joe and Jimmy breakup happened, well, you know, I, I ended up going to work with Joe. Okay. That was like in uh, 1998? 97, 98, 97, somewhere 98. around there, you know. Yeah, and that was kind of like my downfall uh, working there. Uh, although I, I got an opportunity to get on stage and and be a backup vocalist. You know, I, I, I'm a front man. I was never really a backup vocalist, but uh, probably not very good at it. But I learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot from from that experience, and and uh, and then all the all the legal stuff happened with Joe. You know, he got put away. And, yeah. Um, and, but why uh, do you? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Why do you, why do you feel that that was a downfall? Because of oh, just because I think that uh, that was a turning point um, for Tejano music in general. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that Tejano music turned when Moss broke up, when Jimmy and Joe broke up. I'm right. not saying that at all mm-hmm. because it was already on a decline in terms of. Uh, our national pres- the national presence of the kind of music, um, the, um, the the major labels were pull- were slowly pulling out by then. 
the bands weren't drawing that big of a crowd anymore. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I remember uh, I was struggling to get a paycheck from, from Joe, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I got, it, it, it went really bad to, a, to where the plan, I, I had my, I had a Jaguar repoed and oh, it was gosh. bad, you know, it, it was just, uh, although it was a, it was a great experience. I look back now because I tr- always try to turn a negative into a positive. And I think that's been a very, uh, a key thing of my success. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, and I, I, I just, you know, learn from those mistakes and very, very, I, I commit to try not to make the same mistake again because, you know. Pull me once, shame on you, you know. Pull right. me twice, shame on me. And so, um, I just, you know, it, it's just, you know, I, I take all those experiences and learn from them and, you know, not, and now I put them together and, you know, I'm, I'm a lot older now, a lot more mature and, and uh, you know, a lot more business savvy. And, uh, you know, I've taken, I feel that I've taken a, uh, this comeback, I call it a comeback because I was involved in the business with it. Yeah. A lot of people. A lot of right. people say, "No, you weren't." Well, I, you know, I don't care what you think. I, I, I'm very. I'm, I'm a very experienced <laughs> individual in business, and so I take all that experience and, you know, I bring it into this business, and I think I've done pretty good in the last three years. Yes, you have. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, there was a a rumor that was going around about you being Joe Lopez's son. <laughs> And I Nothing remember, but a rumor. yeah, I remember <laughs> like, um, I think I heard, heard you address it on an interview at one time. Mm-hmm. And, um, I know that everyone was talking about it and I, I was just like, I, I don't know. I said, but yeah, you know was- what, let's, I'm going to ask him when I do have an interview with him, I'm going to ask him, you know, that that's actually a rumor started by Joe. Um, and, um, we play, I, I, I'm not going to say that we didn't play the card. We played it. You know, because we lived together, we, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we performed together. We, I mean, he, he, he uh, brought me into his house in San Marcos and allowed me to stay with him. But at the same time, I was working. You know, I wasn't just living there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I was. He, he named me the band manager, the road manager. Um, you know, I, I would handle a lot of a lot of things for him: phone calls, uh, collecting, yeah, working the door, driving. A lot of things, you know, I'd go for this. Oh, go so for he, that. Con- he considered you like his son. Well, you know, we were outside in Pasadena. Uh, I'll never forget it was after a, a gig at Halibut's, and we were outside of his wife's um, at the time, uh, his house, of her house, her parents' house, and um, there was some, just a group of friends. There was just a handful of us, from what I remember. And somebody asked Joe, I can't remember who, but it was a lady. He said, "Joe, is Stevie your son?" You know, well, we had the dimples, and we, you know, we both sang, and, <laughs> and and Joe just looked at me, and he looked at her, and he says, "Pues dicen," you know, that's what they say, <laughs> you know. And Joe had that reputation of having kids everywhere, you know, uh, you know, and and uh, and so we we kind of just it, it kind of just caught, you know, wind like a California wildfire, you know, and and uh, <laughs> that's that's where that all started. But I can assure you, you know, like I've said since day one, that's absolutely not true. Um, do we, you know, people say, wow, man, did you guys even sound alike? You know, I, I get that. And, uh, I learned a lot from him and, and, and to, to get that is a, to hear that it's a, it's a huge compliment to me because, uh, I, you know, Joe Lopez has a beautiful voice, like yeah. Sikita, you know, he, yes. he's canta como un pajarito, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, and, and, and even, even more, he's better now, I think, than he was, uh. Uh, back then because you know you can hear him now with the new recording he's got although um well the, the recording he did you can hear the difference in his voice then towards the end like on the last dance mm-hmm. uh, performance that he did um you know you can hear his he was his voice was given up he needed that break uh but he sounds real good now i mean i don't we don't talk or anything but uh you know that doesn't mean that i'm gonna sit here and bash the guy and whatever you know he's a he's a he's an artist just like and he's a and he's a big time artist yeah, yeah, big name, you know. But our our relationship has nothing to do with the truth, you know. Right. The truth is the truth. Right, and I'm glad I I talked to you about it because I just I always wondered myself, and I thought, you know what, if I ever have the opportunity, I'm gonna ask. And yeah. you know, I got I'm glad that you uh, cleared it up as well. Yeah, you know, I've always said, hey man, go straight to the horse. Quit, you know. I hate I hate the rumors. I hate the yeah. the the lies and you know the or the what ifs. And, 
you know, that's all. It's the cheese then, man. The cheese man in the yeah, industry. The, the, that's, the cheese man in this industry is ridiculous. It's man. bad. But, I know. I know. I, I, I totally understand from that. Now, you, um, you've worked with uh, Shelly Lattis. In fact, in the, I remember, um, I, you know what, I've been trying to, rem I think I was there 2019 at the TTMAs. Mm -hmm. I believe I went. I'm trying to I, my memory. I've been to so many events that I get them mixed up. But and it might have been the 2018. <laughs> the 2000. I've been since I made my comeback uh, career. I went to the 17s, the 18s. There was I didn't go to the 19s because I I, I didn't. Uh, the only thing I qualified for the 19s was uh, the duet with that I did with Shelly. Mm -hmm. But because the album came out in 2019, the whole album qualified for this year's show. Oh, so we, okay. we pulled out and we didn't go to 19. Uh, okay, so I thought, <clears throat> what, so what year 18. was it? What year 18. was it then you earned the top new male artist? Was that 2018? That, yeah. That was, that's okay. Right. Yeah, I believe I was there. Because yes. that's that's when I started knowing where you who you were. And then the next year um i introduced you in fact at fanfare on the stage you performed that's right yeah and so i that's got right. a chance to to introduce you um that's right what was it like working with shelly well you know it's funny that you say fanfare because it was uh <laughs> it was a year before um it was the year after i had won the award mm-hmm and fanfare had come around. It was some, sometime in March, right? The right. awards were November 2018, and Shelly was on KXTN on San, the San Antonio radio station, Univision, on an interview. And I was live on Facebook listening to her interview, watching it. Yeah. And uh, there was a young lady there monitoring the questions and the, wh who the people were logging on. And then that lady says, oh, Stevie D just logged on. And she goes, oh, hi, Stevie. And, you know. <laughs> and I and I and I, so she, so she said hi. Plus, you know, I just took it upon myself to ask her if she'd do a duet with me. You oh, know? cool! And I knew that Shelly and I'd already done my research, and I knew that I, I love the way Shelly sings. I've been a fan of Shelly's for I don't know thirty years. Thirty years, you know. She started singing before I even knew about the Hound of Music. I think, but uh, she's been in the business for I think 37, 38 years. Mm -hmm. But I've been a big fan of hers, and I, and I it, it was. Just a crazy, you know, I asked on a whim, and I said, would you think about doing a duet with me? And uh, I had just won the award, and I guess she knew, and um, and she said, yes, hey, have your people contact my people, is what she said, and I was oh, like, awesome. oh, shoot, you know? <laughs> so, at, at the time, Eddie Perez, who is the, uh, one of the leaders and bass players of La Calma, uh -huh. uh, was, I had hired him uh, for a full year to help me launch my my um, my career and I said and he's you know he's a, a, a hell of a producer and you know people turn to him all the time he's a great musician guitar player he was playing uh, guitar for me at the time and uh, and I and I told him and he says what well, really and I said yeah dude she wants to do it she said she'd do it do you know her he goes yeah I know her okay so we'll call her and make it happen and so he did, and Shelly says, yeah, I'd love to. And then Eddie started looking for a song. And the first song that he gave to me and gave to Shelly, I said, oh, wow, this is, a, this is an awesome song. Rumor has it, and I haven't confirmed this with Elida yet, but rumor has it that that song was given to Elida to do a duet with either Jesse Turner or somebody else. Oh, wow. And, and they declined it. Oh, really? It's a beautiful that, song. Yeah, and so um, Shelly liked it, I liked it, and he said, well, there's no need to look any further. It was the very first song, we felt it, and Eddie Pettis put it together, you know, he arranged it, and um, and lo and behold, I mean, a, a masterpiece came out. And then so we ended up winning, um, the, the, the later that year, we won, Shelly and I won at the MTAs, the Mike Tejano Music Awards, uh, in, in South Texas, which is the, another big award ceremony, yes. uh, we ended mm -hmm. up win, winning the um, the uh, collaboration of the year with that song. It's a beautiful uh, song. It's yeah. I mean, 
Eddie really knocked it out of the park. Uh, working with Shelly was very easy because I never got to see her. You know, a lot of people think that you go to the studio and you and you sing together. No, it's not <laughs> like that anymore. You know, it's, everything is digital. So she was there first. I, I had every intention to be there when, when she did her part, um, but I couldn't make it for whatever reason that day. And so Eddie told me, don't worry about it. We'll just, you know, we'll, we'll put yours in second. And, yeah. and uh, we, wanted it, we wanted it to be that way so that we could have pictures and all that, but it didn't, it didn't work out that way. Uh, but um, man, I'm so proud of that song. Uh, it's a beautiful song. I'm so proud of Eddie Pettis. Uh, I spoke to him this morning over Facebook. Uh, you know, he's passing on the tradition to his son on accordion. I was watching a video of his son playing with Bobby Pulido. Uh, and, um, you know, it's just, uh, we're having a lot of fun doing what we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't regret anything. You know, I don't regret anything that's happened thus far. I'm looking forward to many, 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 many more years to come in this business. Now, what have you, since you've been in this business, what has been the most challenging for you? You know, um, everything's a challenge, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. Everything can be. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it all, it's, it all, it's all based on your uh, work ethic, you know, how much you really want it. And, and I, I, I like the question. I, I, and so far, you know, I got to tell you, I got to hand it to you. You're asking some really intelligent questions, and I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate the fact that it's not the same old questions all the right. time. You're, getting, you're, work, you're, you're making me work here, Peaches, and that's good. <laughs> but uh, the most challenging, I gotta say, has been my vocal turnaround. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, you know, um, when I did my first album, The Repente, I was with my own label, Steady Music. Well, it's not, it was mine and Eddie Pettis, Steady. Okay. So the ST for Stevie and the Eddie for Eddie, Steady. That's, uh, that's why we came up with that name, Steady oh, Music. Okay. And so um, I really didn't have any vocal coaching. I recorded it at um, at uh, Velasquez Music in San Antonio. Uh -huh. uh, there, was, there was no vocal coaching, and I was really, really fresh back into the business after, a, after a, a, um, been gone for 15 years. Yeah. And so um, uh, there was, you know, very just – intonation and toning and tuning and things like that uh but nothing really major and then i did the second album where i got signed by by a, a small little label that, that's really nothing but uh bmb i think uh, steady music was bigger than bmb at the time i don't know but um scott signed there and again i recorded with gilbert velasquez and gilbert velasquez is a master you know he's well, a he master <clears throat> yeah. you know he's just a, he's a he's a badass and a good friend of mine and and um but at the same time, uh, I, I really didn't get any vocal coaching, and I, I did what uh, I did. What I did, I'd, I'd walk in into the studio, and man, I'd do a song in two takes, and I, and I was out of there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, for real, I thought, shit, I'm doing good. You know, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Then I then I hired. A, I, I actually went to a vocal um, a vocal uh, 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 coaching course that Eddie recommended that I go to. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Enrique Iglesias' uh, uh, featured vocalist, and her name is Laura. It's Laura something or the other. She's she's his main backup vocalist, and she's out of L.A. And she came to Austin, and you know she had a, a workshop, and I attended. And then I attended the next one, and I helped her with it. Uh, and so That's when cool. I when I got signed <laughs> with Freddie Records, and we we started producing this album. Mm -hmm. Well, my producer, Brando Mireles, then came in, and now I'm getting vocally coached with each phrase. So <laughs> let me let me let me put this let me let me just put this in perspective to you. You remember in La Bamba where where Richie is like, well, 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 <laughs> yeah. let's go, let's go, well, well. That's exactly how it went. <laughs> and each song I sang 112 <laughs> times because. I was doing it my way, and and my producer's now telling me now I have a, my producer that <laughs> is very, you know, intricate about every single word, and then I have Jay Alanis who you know played with Jimmy Gonzalez for I don't know 13, 14 years, and is an awesome vocalist himself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and he's my backup vocalist, and he's you know he's just he's a monster, you know, with his vocals, and. Uh, and he's, you know, they're, they're just sitting there. No, Stevie, we want you to do this, you know. And they're they're like Quincy <laughs> Jones telling Michael Jackson, no, 
this way. <laughs> That's why Quincy Jones was what he was, right? And so, right. yeah. At first, I was like, "Oh, come on, man, we're not gonna do this." Really, I was doing the song, and then I said, "Uh, uh-uh. no, Stevie." You, I told myself, "You're gonna have an open mind. You're gonna listen, and then we're gonna see what's gonna what, what what's gonna happen. What happens? Let's listen to the end result of one song." Mm-hmm. And when we did La Última Vez, and after singing it 150 times, at the end of the night, we sat on the parking lot of Freddie Records. We opened a beer, and it must have been about 2 o'clock in the morning by the time we were done. And uh, we sat in, in, in a car to listen to the mix. And I'll tell you what, we laughed, we cried. It was unbelievable, the three of us, right? It was Jay, Rando, and myself. And it was just holy moly, and and <laughs> you know, they just think you see that's why we did it that way. That's this is man, this it's amazing. We got real excited. At that point, we knew we had something special. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so I let my guard down. I said, "You guys are in charge. Do with me what you want in terms of vocal, <laughs> vocal <laughs> coaching, <laughs> and uh, and let's get this album done." And I'll tell you what, when I when I opened up to that, I think that was the biggest challenge was me accepting the help. It didn't take much, but it was a big challenge at first, right? Because right. I was like, if I had so much success already, why why are we changing? Yeah, you know? you're right. And you could and, have been like just hard headed and been like, why yes. why do I have to listen to you when I know what I'm doing? You know? Right, right. I could have been that way. Mm-hmm. And instead, I let them. I let myself be coached, and I let them coach me. And I'll tell you what, the end result, I mean, it speaks for itself. So these guys I trust, uh, these guys, they believe in me, I believe in them, and we have a really good, a real good core team here uh, um, with, with, with Brando and, and Jay and myself, and of course, Omero Esquivel on the accordion. Um, I've got Emiliano on bass. And, uh, it's just, you know, we've got a really, really good core, Larry Villanueva on drums. We, we, we've got a really good team. And uh, I'm excited. There's, uh, it's, it's completely 100% professional. Um, you know, it, 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 it just, it's well, it's a, it's a good match. And I'm excited about getting back up on stage and giving it, giving it all to the people because they deserve it. They had a big break from live music. Yes. The, the, the floodgates are opening, and, and we're excited to put on a big show. I mean, we're coming out with an international type of show. I mean. We want to. We, we're raising the bar. I mean, if you haven't seen the video to La Última Vez, watch it because that's what I mean when I say raising the bar. We, mm-hmm. I, I produced that video. Oh, I seen I, it. I seen the video. It's good. Yeah, it's 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 different, right? It's not right. It's it not is. the typical video where you know the band is out in an open field playing air guitar. It's air like drums. you're telling a story. It's a well. I you know I, I want to get away from the from the word video and call it a musical film. Because it's what it is. It's a short story. It's a short film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's very cinematic. It's like a movie. And um, that's the type of material that you or, or production that you're going to see from this team. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear a lot of. Um, and here's why we're doing that. Here's here's my thought process behind that. I hear a lot of musicians. I've heard it in the past couple of years. Well, you know, let, let, I'll take, give you an example. Yeah, we went to the Grammys, but they man, they, 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 they give the award away for Tejano Music at, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's hot, and you're sweating, and, you know, <laughs> I was in my dress, and this, that, and the other, and, you know, my makeup, or, or my tux- or whatever I was yeah. wearing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, uh, well, the, the reason they're giving it away at, 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 at noon is because they want to recognize the industry, but it's not that recognizable anymore, mm-hmm. Right. The mm-hmm. major labels aren't part of it. There's no right. money behind it. And most of all, um, I don't feel that we're giving the Latin uh, uh, genre in general, the, we're not being compatible to the other Latin genres. Right. Give you an example, the, 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 the videos. And here's, where, here's where the whole thought process is coming from. The videos, every other video, there's got to be a million videos with the band out in an open field or at the beach, or by the pool, or, well, I, I shouldn't say pool because I have pools in my videos, but, or, or you know, at the beach, in the sand, <laughs> playing the drums, you know, who does, why, why? I mean, let's make a story behind, follow, make your, your musical film, follow your song. And that's what I did. And so I feel that we kind of raised the bar here 
Mm. And if we do that, now we're compatible with, you know, Pitbull, Enrique Iglesias, Alejandro Fernandez. You know, let's raise the bar to, you know, the Latin genre yeah. as a whole, as opposed to just Tico Tejano. Y let me do it the easy way. Okay, put the drums there, the bajo sexto over here, and, you know, the accordion player right here, and the singer over here. Oh, but, uh, you yeah. know, I'm like, yeah. that's boring to me. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to produce, you know? Right, and I just had talked to Shelly Lattice about that on an interview, and she was saying that you got to set your standards higher. You know, we even us yes. DJs, us DJs, and we need to really step up our game in order for us to be taken seriously. And I agree. I mean, artists, you know, bands, DJs, and uh, I mean, that's something that um, I remember talking to her, and I agree with that, you know, 100%. Yeah, uh, Shelly is a, an advocate towards that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Gable Zavala, uh, Brando, my, my producer, Brando Mireles. Right. I mean, we talk about it. We're like, oh, man, let's, let's, man, let's get the, the international crowd involved. I mean, they say, si pegas en Monterrey, pegas donde sea. You hit, your song hits in Monterrey, Mexico, mm -hmm. you're hit everywhere. Right. It's over, yeah. right? right? And that's what we're after. We're after the big, you know, uh, I don't want to just play at the clubs. I want to play in, in, a, in a coliseum. I want, you know, I want to perform at, you know, at the big, at the big places, you know. So yeah. Shelly's absolutely right. We have to really step up in order for us to be respected mm -hmm. the way we want to be. We've got to give them back what they want. We can't just give them what we want and expect that they're going to give us what we want. No, you know, it's got to, we've got to step up to the plate. And Shelly's absolutely right. G uh, Gabriel Zavala um, is a master and, and you know, you know, it's he, oh, he yes. uh, wrote me the other day and, and, and uh, texted me the other day and congratulated me on the song. I was very, I mean, my jaw dropped coming from him. <laughs> but, you know, I think that, I think that, you know, there's a lot of us on the same page, but I would challenge my, my peers to, hey, man, let's, let's, let's try to step up to the plate. You know, everybody wants everything. There's, there are musicians in the industry right now that have paid their dues mm -hmm. and are waiting for them to get, get paid in return. Right. That's just not going to happen right now because the industry is not, not, not there. There are, there are, there are uh, uh, colleagues out there, and I won't mention any names, but they've paid some of their dues like I have. Some. I haven't paid very many, but I'm still, and I'm still paying them. Mm -hmm. But I've got a different mentality when it comes to that, you know? Um, I haven't bought any radio time with you. I didn't pay you for this interview. Right. I, didn't pay, I didn't pay for the interview on Telemundo that I had the other day. I didn't pay for the, you know... I, and I refuse to do that. That payola stuff's for the birds, and it hardly ever exists anymore. But I know it, it does, I guess, somewhere. But I've, you know, I've never done that. Although I've been accused of it, haters, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. You know who you are. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm working hard so that that hard work can pay off later. But I'm also working very smart, I'm not just working hard. But I'm up till three, four o'clock in the morning, addressing my fans, answering answering questions and things of that nature. And, and that's one of the things that I've heard from the fans themselves that, hey man, you're the only one that does that. Mm -hmm. Well then good, because I want to set, set myself aside from everybody else. I don't want to, I don't want to treat people the way somebody else treats people. I want to treat them better or the same if they're doing a great job. Right. And that's one thing that I think the fans, they know that you appreciate them. I have a fan here, Juanita Rojas. She just, um, she sent me a message here in the chat room saying that she was at a private event you were playing a few years back, and you performed with uh, Ray Reina. You had a table set up with some merchandise, and um, she left her purse in the hotel, didn't have the money to buy um, your CD, but you just, you knew, I mean, you know, she, she wanted a CD, and you gave it to her. You gave her a CD, and she said she's never uh, forgotten that. And she, well, you know, she appreciates I, I, that. I, re I remember her. Mm -hmm. I remember the exact where we were at, where we were, we were playing. <laughs> I think I think the place was uh, was uh, in um, about 45 minutes from where I live. Um, uh, and K Killeen. Mm -hmm. We were in Killeen, Texas. I think that's where it was. Uh, and I remember that happening. And I autographed it for her. I gave it to her and I said, don't even worry about it, you know. But the payment back to me is for her to, that she wanted the CD. Yeah. That was payment enough for me. I mean, that is was an honor for a, for somebody who says, "Man, this guy was good enough for me to buy something, but I forgot my purse." Was well, what am I going to do? No, forget <laughs> it. You can't have it. Heck no, man. No. 
that was, I mean, I, and I won't forget that either. I, and I'm not, that's not the only time I've done it. I've done it several times um, where somebody's told me, I, I just, I mean, I can't afford it. And I was like, what do you mean? You have a, do you have a CD player? Yeah, well, in here, you can afford to listen to it. That's all I want you to do. Give me a shot. Just give me an opportunity. Hear me out. Yeah. And they have, and they've been lifelong fans and friends. I call them friends, friends and fans put together, F-R-A-N-S. So, I mean, uh, uh, it, it brings joy to my heart when I'm on stage and, and I see people smile. And if I can take them back to a moment in from the 90s or from the 80s, because I have that old classic sound. Yes, I do. I'm not, I'm not doing away from that. You know, I think everyone um, loves that classic sound. Everyone just, I mean, for us that are that are older, it brings back the good day. You know, the good times. The the, I mean, yeah, we need to. I I, I do like the new music. You know, I do like the new sound, but I also appreciate the classic um, sound. Yeah. You know, because that's so, what I grew so, up on. Yeah. So like with. Uh, um, Ahora sigo yo. Mm -hmm. It had that old classic feel, but with mod it, it was modernized. Same thing with La Última Vez. La Última Vez sounds classic, but there's something real and fresh about it, you know? Yes. And so mm -hmm. we combine both. We're combining both and we're creating something new. Although a lot of people will say with La Última Vez, because there's this real small part that, that uh, a, real, a small sound that Jimmy Gonzalez used on one of his songs. And it kind of, throws you back over there but that's you know that's intentional and if you don't know this by now i'm a I, i'm i'm a marketing guru i mean i spent 35 years in sales and marketing i know how to attract people and it's i'm not doing it purposely it's not subliminal messages but it is an attraction uh that i'm that i'm that we're purposely uh, um going for because although everything else is new we could add just one little thing that'll like wow that sounded like old school stuff, and 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 we're human. That's how we react. And if it can, if it, it's almost like a deja vu in, in my music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it brings people joy, and I see people smiling, and that right there is what I'm after. Right. Now, don't buy don't buy me a drink. Don't. I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't be drinking on stage anyway. Don't 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 buy me alcohol. Don't you know? None of that. You know, come to my come to the come to my shows because you want to hear the music, you want to smile, and you want to get away and escape for a, for an hour from the real world. Because when you come to my show, that's what I want. I want to just escape. And I, re, you know, there, there there's been times where I you know, remember that song that that Pina Colada song called Escape. I yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. There's there's been times where I've been wanting to play it. You know, <laughs> just so that people can get the message, man. Let's just escape for a minute. Yeah. Stop, smile, and let's have some fun. No fighting. You know, no, no drinking and driving. Let's just, let's just have some fun, have some peace mm. and love, and, and yeah. share music for, for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever the gig may be. And you know, watching you on stage, I could tell you because I've, I'm not only, you know, I'm a fan, so I, I, I'm a DJ, but I'm also a big fan. So when I, I've seen you, a uh, few times on stage, and you just have that. When people see you, like uh, me and my, I call them my um, traveling Tejano divas, which is, you <laughs> yes. know, we always, us four ladies, we're always, you know, traveling everywhere to see Tejano. We just that feel good kind of like you just get a smile from ear to ear. And, and we just like, it, and we, we look at each other and it's just that good feeling that you get, you know, watching you on stage and knowing that you appreciate i mean you see us we travel for you know 14 yeah. hours just to hey stevie d's gonna be there yeah let's go let's go see you know let's go check it out i mean what do we have to lose you know so it's it's like that drug you know that's what i <laughs> want it to be it's like a drug you know uh um intocable the song hey, it is me drug. Yeah. It is me. remember that okay yeah, so yeah. so that's what that's what it reminds me when people say what you just said you know it's that euphoria that mm -hmm. man, you know, let's let's go check out that show and, I, and man, I'm so glad that that works, man, because it, it's, I'm just being myself when I'm up there, man. I'm I'm, I'm just like being down there on, on, in the dance floor, except I don't know how to dance, so I got to do my stuff on stage to help somebody <laughs> else dance. I'll step on my own feet, trip on the fl floor, and then bust my teeth, and I won't be able to sing all night. People, you know, I, I've been asked to dance several times, and I'm like, no, 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 you don't want that. Then you really <laughs> laugh at me. 
<laughs> you won't be smiling at me. You'll be laughing at me, and I don't want that. Well, I have to remember <laughs> that. I have to remember that. <laughs> yeah. When I say no, it's not because I'm trying to insult you or that I can't yeah. or that or that I'm going to get you know in trouble. Nah, none of that. <laughs> it's just that I can't dance, girl. I don't want to dance. So, no. so my daughter, my 10-year-old, she goes, okay, Dad, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get on TikTok. Oh, God. And, and and so she's got me on there. No, I'm like, oh, I, I, the other day I think I broke a hip. I thought I had. <laughs> All the dances like, no, that I they do. I can't yeah. be doing that stuff. Shake, <laughs> your, shake your ass this way, shake your ass. No, I can't do that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to play the your newest single because that yes. I, I feel that this song is really, like you said, the standards are set high. And this song is beautiful i love it when i first heard it i was like man this song is really awesome and, and i i've always liked your vocals this song right here you could tell your vocals have changed but like you said yeah. you've had you know i mean you could just tell the slight difference but this song brings it out so much yeah. more so if you don't Jay, mind let me, no no i want you to play it right now i just want i just gotta give credit sure. to, to jay alanis I remember sitting in the back seat of the car <laughs> listening to this and he just leaned over and he goes, when they hear this song, people are going to say, whoa, this is the Stevie D we've never heard before. Yeah. I'll never forget he said that. Yeah. And that's why I trust those guys with, with everything, you know, and, and that's why I let them lead the team. But yeah, let's play it. La última vez. All righty. Okay. You want to introduce it? Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Stevie D and you're about to hear my latest hit here on TheHouseBest.com, La Ultima Vez. Okay, that is Stevie D's new single, and he just signed on with Freddie Records, which is a huge accomplishment. So congratulations, and man, that is something, that is a beautiful song. Let me tell you, I got the chills. Every time I hear it, I get the chills. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I have my, my three-year-old at home, and she'll watch the video. Um, she's learning the song, and she'll watch the video or the musical okay. film, I should say, you know, 10, 20, 30 times in a room. <laughs> she talks and everything, but she doesn't know Spanish too much, but she she's imitating the words. You know? Oh, wow. Esta la es que nos vamos a ver. And, uh, it's, it's I see the video thing. on your page of her. Yeah, she, she was watching. Yeah, yes. I did. I did. She, She's, she's trying to put a piece of chicken in her mouth and she keeps singing and pulling the chicken. I thought it was so super cute. I said, I gotta post this. How but uh, cute. the song was written by, um, by I gotta give him credit, uh, Juan Trevino out of Houston, Texas. He's a Latin Grammy Award winning uh, composer. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm honored to sing, to, to, to have done one of his songs. I've, I've received music from him in the past. Uh, unfortunately, at the time, lower that down, baby. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, at the time, the, his those songs were not for me at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, this time around, I called. Uh, you know, song selection for me is the biggest is the biggest thing. It's very it, it's very difficult to make it on the on uh, on my list of songs um, for my records. Okay, and what I mean by that is it's not I'm not trying to insult anybody's. Um, 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 composing skills right. or anything like that. It's but, just that you know, I have, I have a a, a certain criteria that I look for. Okay, mm -hmm. and the lyrics have to mean and the lyrics to me mean everything. Okay, um, I'm going to give you an example. A good friend of mine is Tony Guerrero. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tony Guerrero has come over to my house, had dinner with me, celebrated my wife's birthday with me. We sang las mañanitas to her. At my house, along with Lola, uh, Teresa Martinez. Oh yes, uh -huh. uh, you know, been, been been to my house, and we're good friends. But just like he can sing, come on, everybody, say sap sap sap. <laughs> I I can't do that. Uh -huh. You're not I can't sing what I call chistosas. I won't sing it. Not that Sapo's a bad song. It's it's a great song. It's an all time song. Right. But that's. That's ton, that's La Sombra style. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. That's not that's not my style. Right. So that if you send me a song like that, it's you know, nine times out of ten, or no no, ten times out of ten, I'm not gonna record it. Right? Mm hmm Right. So my songs are more of, uh, you know, romantic cumbias, 
ballads and really, really good rancheros. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, and so the words have, have a lot to do. So anyway, I, because I took forever picking the songs, I started, you know, I was down to my last couple of songs. We, this song, this album has 12 songs on it and 10 of them are originals. Nice. We only have two, two covers. Um, and one of these covers has never been done in the Tejano industry before. And the other one is a classic that I've always wanted to do. So I did it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I called Freddie Martinez Jr. And I said, hey, bro, I'm having trouble over here with two more songs. I need your help. What do you have in your in your um, library there? And he goes, okay, let me see what I got. He goes, you know what, Stevie? As a matter of fact, I've got something here that I think you're going to be able to handle. So he sends me La Ultima Vez. Uh -huh. And I hear it, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Put this under lock and key. This is a badass. That's what I said. So I sent it to Brando, my producer, mm -hmm. keyboard player, and he says, "Where'd you get this song, bro?" And I was like, "Freddie just sent it to me." He goes, "Okay, <laughs> we're doing it. I'm gonna start working on it right now." So he does, and um, you know, at first I thought it was too slow. I didn't, you know, I didn't know where we were going with it. Um, and I sent it to Jay, and Jay says, "Stevie, don't you think it's too slow?" You know, we were like, "Yeah," but. So then I talked to Brando, and I said, Brando, when we speed it up for a little bit, he goes, hey, 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 cada quien tiene su talento. <laughs> Everybody's got their talent. You let me do this part, you just sing your little pretty self away, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and we laughed, and I said, okay. But then we got to the studio, and we just let, you know, the, the gods of the music and, uh, you know, take over. And, uh, you know, the spirits were there, and shoot, man. When we were done, we had this end result, and, you know, uh, um, again, like Brando said, cada quien se tiene su talento, I'll never question that again, you know, because he knew what he was hearing, and that's why, you know, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> He'll tell you differently, but, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, but, um, it, it's just, uh, the magic came alive in the studio, and, Again, that's why at the end of the night, that night, it was super late. And we were just, uh, we worked on one song the whole day. One song, almost 24 hours. Wow, it came out beautiful. It came and out so, yeah, really So yeah, hard work beautiful. pays off, you know, so working smart, working hard. Yes. Um, it pays off. Yes, and working with the right people, you know. Yeah, you, and you, put a, you assemble a team like the team I have, you know. We also, I got to give credit to Mike Benavides. He, he's a... Uh, He's on the Lucky Joe team, but uh, my guy couldn't make it um, for health purposes. And so Mike Benavides came in and did the congas for us. Um, and Chete Barrera, of course, he's done the drums on all my albums. Oh, uh, cool. So, yeah, so Chente is a good friend of mine and yeah, uh, awesome, awesome vocalist himself. Um, so, um, but um, yeah, the, 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 oh, wait a minute. And then I got to give credit to my babe. She's not my babe, but she's, she's probably the best. <laughs> One of the best female vocalists out there, Christina Salinas. Oh, yes. Um, she did, uh, she came in on, on a, I mean, she practiced for a couple of hours and then she just, she was, oh my God, this is beautiful. She knocked it out. She's she awesome. Did it. Yeah. Shoot, man. She's... That girl. I'm just waiting for her to say yes and she'll go on the road with me. I know you're listening, Christina. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> I love her. She's, She's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, very yes. cool person. Oh, very another cool. thing. I wanted to address with you because the rumor was going around and I heard it and uh, yeah, I, this is something that's um, pretty juicy here, but uh, I want to know, <laughs> how do you uh, feel about internet radio? How do I feel about, oh, I know what you're talking about. I heard that rumor <laughs> too. Oh man, it's, you know, let, let me just start by saying this. Haters are always going to hate. Right, okay? right. I deal with people, and this is very unfortunate, but it's a very serious matter. Um, there's a handful of people out there, maybe two handfuls, maybe 10 people out there that thrive, that live their lives on trying to ruin other musicians' lives. Number one, because they don't have what it takes, okay? I'm just gonna call an ace an ace. They don't have what it takes. Number two, and what I mean, I'm, I'm not saying musically or, or by their talent, I'm talking about their attitude, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. They won't follow through with what's supposed to be done. They want things handed to them. And that's not that's not in this, you know, that's not like that anymore. Nobody's the Beatles, nobody's Van Halen, nobody's Motley Crue, mm -hmm. or, or Prince or Michael Jackson. They're just not gonna hand it to you. You've gotta earn it. 
Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. And the more I try to do this genre better, it seems like the more people want to bring you down. And that's very unfortunate. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen uh, when it comes to our culture. Our culture is a beautiful culture. Mexicanos, Tejanos, Mexican American, Latinos, Chicanos, whatever you want to call us. Right. We're all the same. But we're the only we're the only race that act like crabs. When one tries to get away, the other one will pull them down. Right. You I've don't see that, that in country music. Mm-hmm. You don't even see that in rap anymore. You used to back in the nineties, but you don't see that in rap. You see blacks helping Mexicanos out. You see Snoop Dogg helping out bandas. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You see Pitbull on a country album. Country helps out country. You know, I don't get it. But that rumor, we know who it is. You know, I approached my, my label. Mm-hmm. I, I approached the executive team. And I said, there's this issue here I heard about. I want you guys to look, take, take a look at it. Because now we're talking, I mean, this is, now, now there's legal things here, right? Because there's slander and now you're, you're, you're there's a... a Defamation of character defamation and character, things like right. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. So I, I had to bring in the label, and so we're looking into it, and you know, you know, I, 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 that that needs to stop. What do I think about internet radio? I've done twenty. Here, let me see. I have it right here. Let me go right here. And now with you, 28, 28 uh, internet radio station interviews. Oh, wow. What do you think I think about internet radio? <laughs> I built my career on the internet. I mean, that that rumor that uh, I, 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 don't, I don't like doing in, internet radio. I do Facebook interviews. I do internet radio. I, I hop in on people's live feeds when they're on DJ's live feeds on Facebook. Yeah, you do. You know, I communicate mm-hmm. with the fans. I mean, how, how, how does that even, how is that even relevant to what I, if you don't hear it from the horse's mouth, it's bullshit as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. And right. that's one thing that really pisses me off because again, every day I've got to fight people off like that mm-hmm. because they just, they got nothing better to do. But then again, I hear, you know what? They're your biggest fans because they keep you relevant. And it's true. Those guys keep me relevant. Those 10 people, 11 right. people, 12 people, they keep you relevant because they don't understand this and their little ignorant minds that when they do that, they're just making news for me and they keep me in the news. They keep me <laughs> talked about. That's true. And that's marketing. They're yeah. actually helping. They're helping. As opposed to not saying anything. If I don't like somebody, I'm not going to talk about them because I'm going to keep them relevant. But I appreciate the haters because you have to have them. They're just, they're fans. They're just a different type of fan. It's called influential, it's called influential marketing. Remember, I've been in marketing and sales for 35 years before I did this again. It's called influential marketing. If they throw a punch at me, you kill them with kindness. You kill them with kindness. And every once in a while, boom, you throw a punch right back. I mean, there's somebody, I mean, I can call the guy out right now. I won't because you know who you are and I know you're listening. But everybody knows that it's you doing this right mm-hmm. or that you're one of the instigators and it's cool um but you know you, it, it, there's gonna come a time where i hit him in the <laughs> gut and then it's gonna start that thing again where he's starting to market me when he shuts up i gotta hit him in the gut so he can talk bad about me again because <laughs> he's got to keep me relevant that's the only way he knows how he doesn't know how to talk good because he doesn't love himself and you that's know? that's a problem with the industry and it's not only artists it's like i was telling you it's all us djs too i mean i'm i'm always willing to help anyone out i go support you know other stations i go support other djs um i work with other djs there's a few that won't work with me any and i i just i quit trying but i guess like you say like I, i've talked to my husband and he's like you know what peach don't worry about it because if they stop talking about you that's when you know that you're done. You have nothing, you know, you know, so yeah, you've made a good point. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I'm going to tell you a story, a personal story. Uh, I was in a jail, in a jail cell with Joe Lopez in San Marcos. Okay. And I was very worried about, you know, us being busted, uh, and going to jail and sitting in this jail cell for, you know, six, eight hours. 
And I told Joe, I said, Joe, man, this is going to hit the headlines in Brownsville, mm-hmm. you know? He goes, so what? I said, well, I have kids, man. You know, that's, that's so what, you know? And he <laughs> says, look, man, in this business, and I learned this from him, and I know where he learned it from. Um, <laughs> he, and I told him, he says to me, hey, in this business, don't worry about good or bad. It's always good. But when they stop talking about you, then you need to worry about it. And it made a lot of sense to me. You know, that was like one of my first lessons in, in, a, in marketing. And he's right. He was right. Although the, at the time he told me was, was a bad time. But, I mean, that's in the past, right? I don't care about the past. I care about what we're doing now. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, again, remember I told you earlier, we take a, we take <clears throat> a negative and we make it into a positive. We learn right. from the mistakes that we've made. Everybody has a past. You know, see, I Everybody has a past. Right. I right. have a past. Peaches, you have a past. I've done things that I'm ashamed of, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know. And, and, and then I'll carry that for the rest of my life. Yes. I get it, but we all do. We all do. You know? yeah. It's what you learn from that and you carry forward that that's what matters. That's what matters in God's eyes. Right. And so, um, you know, the haters, you know, yeah, it, it, it's, it, gets, it gets to me, but if, you know, I don't know. Just I it, guess when you have they're, peace. They're, I'll tell you what, they're not going to, they're not going to shut me down. Yeah. Regardless well, of what they pull out of their magic hat. So, it, go for it. Yeah, you can't, you, uh, I mean, so many of us probably so many times we just want to quit because the industry can be so, it, it can be very cruel. But then, yeah. you know, like if I would have quit a couple of years back, I was having trouble with a few DJs. If I would have quit, where would I be, in, you know, where would I be now? I mean, what would I, I, you know, I love what I do. And this, this is what makes me happy. So there you go. I, I have to, you know, you got to do things to make yourself happy. And if you have peace within yourself, nothing. That's all that matters. Right. Nothing will can. You have control over how you react to it. You know, so like you said, just, you know, let them talk and and they are. They're creating, you know, some free marketing for you. Yeah, that's what it is really at the end of the day. Knock <laughs> yourselves out, guys. Okay? Whoever it is. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I remember... We, we know who they are. Yeah, and I, I remember um, it was a, a promoter you had back when you first started, Lee... I want to Okay, yeah. Well, he reached out to me, and um, he was like, hey, I know you work for Tahano Nation. I have a new artist here that um, I want to give him some expo- more exposure. I want him to, you know, to have the and the article done and... and I guess at that time, um, John Henry didn't know too much, you know, who you were and stuff. And I said, I didn't know who you were either at the time. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do it. You know, I'll do the article. So I did the article and I remember that article for the Hano Nation reached, I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, the viewers on, uh, you know, the statistics on that article was amazing. And I was like, Yes, because wow. that's when I know that I've helped. And I don't know if you remember, but that was like... I remember the article, sure. I mean, that was yeah. my first Kahano Nation article. Yeah, I, so... I, I certainly remember it. Um, yeah. But I didn't know that it had reached that many people or it yeah. had broken any records or anything like that. It was, that's awesome. Yeah, and I, and I think that was how... Congratulations. From there, you blew, you know, you sort of, you blew up. Plus, you know, your music and your personality, I mean... You have to, to me, you have to have the whole package. You got to be good to your fans, good to, you know, other artists. You got to, you got to have that, that good personality to make it in this business. And I think there's only a, maybe a few haters, but let them, you know, you have more people that admire you and really respect your, your craft. I mean, it's. It's a gift. You have a gift. A lot yeah. more people follow you. A lot more people really appreciate you. And, um, you know, like I said, as long as you have peace in what you're doing, you know, that doesn't matter what the haters say. But, yeah, I remember that article, and I just was like, dang, that was so long ago when I did that article. And I was just really I, – I think that's when I first had started coming out on the Hana Nation more – and I was really proud of that article. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations with that. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing that for me because, you know, you're right. When I first, I mean, I, I have the clipping of that. It's framed. 
Oh, uh, wow. And, yeah, I mean, that was my first, one of my first articles. I remember um, simultaneously there had been a, a press release mm-hmm. uh, on on a, a national um, article, or it's Stevie D takes Tejano by storm. Uh-huh. And I have that clipping too. It was on Yahoo. And I was like, oh, chinga. <laughs> so I'm pretty proud of it. You know, I was like, whoa. But yeah, that was awesome. As a matter of fact, I spoke to John Henry uh, uh, Romeo last night. You're uh, supposed to post something today or last night. I, I, I fell asleep early last night. I was trying to stay up, but I had to finish my work from last night in terms of answering messages. I mean, right now, um, and you're right, there's there's so many more people that follow, follow than not follow or try to do harm. So right. that's, where, that's where you need to, that's where the focus needs to be. That's where I need to spend my energy. Um, and that's why, I, that's why I don't really acknowledge the, the, the haters anymore. It's just through there, whatever. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, so last night I fell asleep early and I was waiting for the, the, the article to come out, but I didn't, I didn't make it and you just reminded me, but I'm gonna, I, I, I finished my work this morning because I fell asleep early last night and, um, and I can guarantee you that right now I'll have my, my, my DM uh, with a 150, 200 messages from people uh, just to give you an idea of, of how much the song has impacted. I mean, it, 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 really, it really grew my presence in the industry overnight, and, and I'm excited about that. I never thought that we could have a, a big hit like this um, happen so fast, you know, and, and I got to give credit to Freddie Records for allowing me to be part of that family. Um, that was a goal that I had in you know, a five-year business plan, and I did it in three years, and I'm pretty proud of that accomplishment because Freddie Records has been there for 50, has been here for 50 years. Right. Mm-hmm. And along came Capital EMI, Sony Latino, Wea Latina, you know, all these big, big distributors and big labels, and then all of a sudden they disappeared, and guess who's still standing? Freddie Records, where legends live, where legends have been made, where legends have died, and where legends continue to live. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so proud to be a part of, you know, what Elena Reina is a part of, what Jay Perez is a part of, what Jimmy Gonzalez was a part of. You know, Jimmy Gonzalez is like an idol to me. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, you know, the guy was a, 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 a genius, mastermind. Uh, and I have Brando Mireles, who worked hand in hand with him as a team member of mine. So, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I can't thank God enough. You know, I wake up in the morning, I drop to my knees and I pray. And before I go to bed, I drop to my knees and I pray again. I always give thanks. Uh, that's that's my prayer is to give thanks because I have more to give thanks thank thanks about than I do uh, requests because I have an abundance of, of of gifts that I get daily, and um, uh, I'm just I'm so appreciative to everybody, people listening right now, the people that'll listen later, and to you and all the DJs, all the internet radio stations. Let's make it clear. I am not against internet radio. I'll take your requests. I'll do your drops. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I built my career on the internet. It would be stupid of me to to not do internet radio station. I told this is funny. I'm not going to say who, but but Freddie Junior tells me as far as I know, there's only one artist that doesn't like internet radio station, and uh, I'm not going to say who. But I know who you know, it is. We laughed about it. We laughed about it. <laughs> And I said, okay, well, I mean, why are they saying that about me, though? <laughs> like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And, and you know that one artist... And for the owners of the stations and, <laughs> and all that, don't believe the hype. Call me. My number's... Yeah. Well, you know my number. You know my phone number. Call me and ask me. Ask the horse, man. I'm right here. Right. Uh, uh, you know? A lot, of, anyway. a lot of these problems would probably get... Probably be smoothed out if people would call each other instead of putting... The stuff on, you know, the BS oh, man. on Facebook. Put their drama on Facebook. Yeah. It's yeah. Or, or or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's dumb, man. You just gotta put it. You that's just gotta dumb. call the person, call them out, talk about it, you know, and hopefully things will smooth over. If not, then you know you you know you gotta stay away from that person and you just keep doing your own thing. But I had um Frank Fietto from um, Extreme Dallas. Tejano. Yeah, yeah, Frank Fietto wanted to uh, say, he wanted for me to let you know, just to let the haters hate, but you keep on standing strong. Yeah, Frank's a good guy. I've done many interviews with him and his wife, 
Um, yeah, they're good people. Kudos to you, Frank. Extreme, I think the company's name is Extreme yeah. Radio? Or? Extreme yeah. Tejano. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, Extreme Tejano, that's right. And uh, last time I saw him was, uh, I won't forget, because we did a really good interview there. He was all set up professionally. Yeah. Um, at, in New Braunfels, I think it was a, uh, it was a uh, Crawfish Fest. Oh, okay. uh, so I remember. See, I remember my my interviews. I re- because each and I try to make them all um, independent from each other. You know, that's why I like these good questions, the different ones. You know, most of the time when I go to um, radio, re- terrestrial radio, they're always all the same. <laughs> you know, yeah. On the internet, you can I, you can really dig. You know. Yeah, I, I don't. I like to think of different. You know, each because each interview, I don't want it to be the same thing because I don't capture my audience audience if it's the same questions, and each artist is different. So, um, you know, you guys have That's different good. experiences. You guys have different things that have happened to you in the industry, and as long as the artist is okay with me bringing up whatever it is, then mm-hmm. you know, I think that makes a really good interview. Is when they can be honest and I can ask whatever I want to. So Yeah. Well I mean I told you from the get go, you know, ask me whatever you want. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm an open book. I try to be an open book. Of course, you know, I'm not gonna get into things like, you know, my personal life in terms of, you know, the death of my mother or things of you know that, of, that I don't talk about to yeah. my own family members, you know, but um Yeah. Uh, it's just you know but but you know, we, we should be able to express who we are to our audience. Uh, and I appreciate that from you today because I, I've been able to open up and share with the audience. In some cases, things I've never said before, like the jail thing that just came out. I, I don't know why I said it. <laughs> I was going to ask you, no what well. did you do? <laughs> uh, let's, let's, see, let's not get into the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, That's yeah, right. I mean, it's just a, but it's, it's the truth again. Yeah. I mean, why? Yeah. There's no, no hiding that. It's like, I mean, why hide it? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, I mean, I was, I was, I was really young. I'm 50 years old, and for me to still have the amount of energy that I have right now, um, I, I feel that I'm blessed, and I want to use that energy for positivity. Uh, I, I use my platform for three things: um, the fight against breast cancer. Mm-hmm. I support women. Uh, um, save the tatas, whatever you want to call it. Uh, anti anti bullying. Anti bullying, yes. Mm-hmm. Social media and at schools. I speak. I've, I've talked at schools in Dallas and Houston and in the Valley. Um, and I'm a veteran. I'm a I'm a war veteran for the that United States awesome. Navy and the United for the United States of this this beautiful country of ours. Yeah, okay, regardless of you. how I vote, regardless of how you vote, I don't care about that. We're all Americans. Right. I don't care if you're blue, red, yellow, green. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. But I I also support. We're our veterans because we lose a lot of lives to suicide yes. every year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not only anti-bullying is, is a very high number of kids under uh, from the ages of nine to twelve are taking their lives because other kids are bullying them, oh. and it's at an extreme rate. Over two hundred thousand kids every year are, are taking their own lives. But it's also important to support our veterans and fight for this country and fight for the freedom for you to have the freedom of speech to say what you want to say, to hate the way you want to hate against me. I fought for that freedom, so you should thank me regardless. And and the other men who have lost their lives because of it. Right. But there are people mm-hmm. right now losing their lives because of PTSD, of the depression that they're facing because of what they had to do to protect this country and for, to protect the individuals that live inside this country. And that is what I want my platform to be recognized for not for anything else and that's what i mean when you do stupid things in your life in the past Mm -hmm. do something that's bigger and better to support to support you to take you out of that past and into the present time so that you can be remembered in the future right and thank you for your service i I didn't know that over again if i was 20 years younger wow i did not know that and i read that on on your bio and i was like wow that's really i commend you for that now you have a cool website I was looking at your website. You got some cool merchandise in there. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I've got. That's another thing. There's not my marketing again. Um, you know, I try not to. I'm a little low right now, but I try to stay ahead of the game. I mean, when we did Vegas a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. I said I want to be. I want to do something different. And uh, I told my team, they were like, well, "What do we do?" And I said, "Man, I don't know, but let's let's do something different. Not something nobody's done before. Let's take it to Vegas." So. She, so we said we were um, we were out at uh, I don't know at, a, at a, some store, and I saw these chanclas. 
<laughs> chantas is that's cultural. <laughs> that's cultural. We, we the Mexicanos, the Tejanos, we yeah. love the chancla. It's yeah. forever going to be embedded in our in our culture, right? Right, right. I and then that. so I so then I bought these blingy ones, and we had them per- personalized with the CBD logo on them. And lo and behold, peaches, we got to Vegas. We put them out there, and all two hundred pair sold like that. I Ladies think... were taking their boots off <laughs> right then and there. To, you know, even though their socks were smelling, it didn't matter. They were taking their <laughs> socks out, throwing them away, and putting those chocolates on. They were taking their heels off and putting uh... the chocolates on. It was genius. It worked. Yeah, my you friend know? Natalia. Natalia oh, yes, Fierro Natalia. and Mama Irma, they some. bought chanclas too. She has them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she posts them every once in a while. One time she sent me a picture. She goes, look, she had me, she was all DVD'd out, right, with all the gear. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, did you notice, did you notice my feet? I'm like, no, girl, I didn't notice your feet. What's wrong with you? I don't want to notice anybody's feet. <laughs> well, she had the chanclas on. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Uh, yeah, I so. I remember we were, uh, we were, our booth was right next to, uh, to La Calma's booth. And and uh, uh, the oh singer for La Karma. Do you, have you ever interviewed uh, Leo? Yeah. Did well, I, not I, not recently, but a long time ago, I did. Well, him and I were messing with each other's merchandise, so I stole one of his caps, and he stole a pair of chanclas for his wife. <laughs> and well, I still have that cap. I put that cap on one time, and one of the, you know uh, this is last year, right after uh, uh, Vegas. I put that cap on. And that's where I got, I stole a red cap from him, and he stole a, a gold pair of chanclas. <laughs> well, I put that cap on, I posted a selfie, and I got about 500 hits, likes. <laughs> and and Eddie calls me, he's the bass player for La Cama, he goes, damn, dude, you got, that's like Jesse Turner numbers. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, it's because it's your cap, dude, it's the red cap. <laughs> and then that, but that's where I got my signature color. You know, I use a lot of red now, but it was because of that cap. I got to <laughs> hand it to... Uh, to La Calma for that. I gotta give him credit for <laughs> turning me on to the color red. So now, now a lot of stuff is red with me. I like that color now. I like it. I like all your merchandise in there. I was like, this is so different. It's cool. So yeah, we do uh, we do different stuff. Where can people? I mean, I know I, I looked it up, but where can people that are listening? Where can they look for your merchandise? Well, you can go to one of uh, any one of my pages. Any one of my social media pages has the the Shopify um, store link to it. Okay. okay. It's also going to go on stevedmusic.com, but that is way outdated back to my first album, and they're working on that right now. It's under construction. We're bringing it all up to date. Okay. You can also go to my Facebook page. Uh, uh, like I said, any of my social media pages, uh, but it's a Shopify DVD store um, website. I mean, just look, click on the link, and uh, it'll take you straight to it. <laughs> or you can Google DVD Shopify, and it'll come up. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now, yeah, and um, uh, 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 speaking of social media, I have, obviously we know that we have 5,000 personal friends and family. Mm -hmm. We have a 5,000 personal limit on the personal page. A lot of times we will refresh that, okay? We'll send you over to the fan page so that we can give somebody else some time to recognize or to get to know. I I, want to get to know people. Um, but I have to continuously recycle that page until Facebook allows there to be an unlimited amount of, oh, uh, yeah. or I get, I, I get right. verified. Mm-hmm. So sometimes people get upset, oh, you took me off of your friend. No, no, you have to understand that, you know, we got to give other people a chance too, right? Mm-hmm. And, right? And just like he got an opportunity, somebody else gave up their spot. Uh, and sometimes that happens. Not a lot of times. I have some spaces right now because uh, if um, we've created this algorithm uh, system, that if you're not active on my page for a certain amount of time, you're automatically going to get switched over. Okay. And, and that okay. happens. And so sometimes on a daily basis, I'll lose 10 people or 50 people, right? And I don't lose them. This is you got to talk to me through the other page. That's all. Okay. Um, right. So I, I want to make that, I want to make people aware of that, that, you know, we're not going anywhere. It's just, you know, it's a different page. That's all. Right. People get um, so hurt too. If you, if they yeah, feel like they, they've yes. been deleted you know they get really hurt so yeah Yeah, i promise you that if i didn't have this business because it is a business after all right right what i do for a living if i didn't have this business i wouldn't i wouldn't be on facebook it just takes up too much of my time (laughs) i would not be on facebook but uh but you know i do it because it's you know it's a way for me to communicate with my friends and my family and my fans 
and I like to get uh, uh, um, personal mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, I want to talk to them. Uh, if you send me a forward message, if it's my birthday and you send me a meme that says forward happy birthday or forward happy Father's Day and you sent it out to 30, I'm gonna, you're going to get deleted. Know it right now. I'm deleting you if you send me a, I can't, I don't have, enough, I don't have time for forwards. Yeah. Or you send me a, a Donald Trump forward or a Joe Biden forward, I'm, don't do that. Yeah. There's yeah. no time for that. It's not my business. You all yeah. vote the way you want to vote. I don't tell you how to vote. Don't tell me how to vote. You know, that's personal. So. Right. Right. Any shout outs you want to give anybody? Shout out to everybody. We are the world. We are the people. <laughs> and we should live a better day so we can start living. Let's just live, uh, laugh, and love. That's what I want to say. Man, I'm, I'm so sick of uh, hatred and all this, all this, you know, mess that's going on in the streets. You know, people just, you know, being mean to be mean. They don't even have a reason to be mean anymore. Yeah. Let's get over it, man. This country needs to get back to where it was, which, you know, the land of the free and, you know, a, a beautiful place to be. Uh, um, you know, as a veteran, I'm, I'm very disappointed with the way people are, are acting right now. You know, get a job, find a job, you know, stay, get out of the streets. My grandparents that raised me would have beat the crap out of me if they saw me, you know, turning a building on fire or Oh yeah, or whatever. You know, they, I would have been, I would have been, I would have been in trouble for the rest of my life. I still wouldn't have been able to go outside at fifty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were strict. Man. Yeah, that's they how my, and, that's how my parents were. My par my dad's is like, I'll disown you in a heartbeat. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, you know? I don't have time for that, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm too busy raising kids. You know, trying to teach them right from wrong, and you know, and at the end of the day, you know what? I, I gotta take it. I gotta take it to the parents man because I have I have a daughter who's three years old and I have a daughter who's 30 I've got four kids three of them are girls and my 30 year old has a job she teaches she you know she's not out there doing the things that she shouldn't be doing she's doing the right thing so but there are parents out there that just didn't care or just you know they, 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 you know, they, right. to me they didn't teach them right from wrong you gotta, you gotta bring it all the way back you know yeah that's true uh, it comes yeah, from I call, home. I call an ace an ace. <laughs> I, got, I call an ace an ace. You know, an ace is an ace. An ace is an ace is an ace. So. <laughs> so when am I coming to Tucson is what I want to know. I hope, I really, really hope that you could come soon. I know that uh, well, the casino there's, there's, here hasn't there's... opened up I, for entertainment. They haven't really, all the concerts, even our tribal recognition, um, that's being canceled. Um, it's just... It's pretty sad. I think maybe by next year, maybe Spring everything. Of next year, I think. Yeah. So. Well, there was some talk of me coming up in November, uh, but yeah, uh, that didn't that didn't come through. And then I talked to another promoter there. Uh, I won't mention his name, but um, um, because there's a couple of promoters that are that I'm talking to. Uh, but you know, they're talking now um, March. Sometime. Okay. So, hey, for my we'll birthday, my birthday and your birthday, I have a March. I'm a March, March baby. March too. what? March ninth. I'm March 29th. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we'll get to celebrate our birthdays. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hopefully. That Hopefully. Would be good. So, uh, what else? Well, thank you, Stevie D. I mean, this has been a real interesting and fun interview. I really love talking to you. I mean, you're just. Uh, hey, I enjoyed myself too. An hour and a half. I'm looking at my phone. My AirPods just went. Doo -doo -doo. It means here, get off the phone, dude. Charge me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but no, I, I really enjoyed it, Peaches. You're 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 lovely to speak to, and and I appreciate the questions more than every, every anything, uh, because they were very they were solid questions. They were very uh, well thought thought out, and uh, and I appreciate that. Also, um, to uh, thehandlebest.com, uh, uh, mean saludos. Thank you very much to the owner of the company, and and, uh, and thanks for letting me be on. And expressing my thoughts and opinions and and sharing my music with the world I, I, I certainly appreciate that because without really without internet uh, radio stations I don't I don't think that my career would have launched the way it did um, you know I even uh, I, I even uh, uh, thank internet radio on my albums I give you all credit uh, and some and some I, I point out specifically so I think this is a great interview it's the longest interview I've ever had <laughs> An hour and a half, so you're probably gonna make my this album. <laughs> so watch out for the next album, Tucson. I love you. I can't wait to see you guys. Gracias, Aww. mil gracias a todos. Un abrazo, un saludo y un beso muy grande para todos ustedes. Keep the peace, people.
Maybe you could write a song for me. <laughs> Maybe I could. <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. I think that was already done by Steve Miller. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what song you're talking about, too. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, girl. All right, you, thank you. But I gotta go. Okay. All right, baby. Bye. 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 Thank you. That was Stevie D. Man, what an interview, right? It was just, I told you guys it was going to be a juicy interview, and it was. And um, we, I, I really have a good time talking to him. Anytime I see him, he's always been very kind and... Number one for La Onda. The best Tejano on the internet. Tejano's best. 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 Tejano's best